extremely glad, honored, and privileged uh, to be sitting here in front of all of you here. Uh, oh, a warm welcome to this session. Uh, may I kindly remind you, this is Nepal Bangladesh Forum. This is the joint initiative of AIDIA and Embassy of Republic of Bangladesh, which aims to promote and strengthen bilateral economic cooperation between Nepal and Bangladesh. I believe this is the third edition of Nepal Bangladesh Business Forum. Uh, over the years, we have been hearing uh, there is a tremendous potential for expanding and diversifying trade between the two nations, but translating this uh, potentiality into action is an uphill battle for all of us. So in this session, we'll try to bottleneck some of the core issues. Uh, what role media can play to enhance bilateral ties or to strengthen relation between Nepal and Bangladesh, because we all know in-depth media coverage can bring massive changes and outcome as well. Because modern media is not just um, confined to sharing news and views, it's beyond that. If it's not, it should act beyond sharing news and views. Uh, so with the progress of technology in media, it has risen in every corner more quickly. Uh, therefore, media plays a very vital role uh, in almost everything, be it strengthening international relations, be it strengthening uh, trade between the two nations, and so many other important issues. So, in journalism, uh, there's a very uh, simple uh, quote, or let's say a rule. We most of the time say, if you are in doubt, cut it out. So today I would like to revise that statement. If, we, if you know little, you'll let others speak. <laughs> so I'd like to welcome our fantastic panelists uh, in front of all of you. We have keynote speaker as uh, Mr. Madhuraman Achayo. He is the former foreign secretary and permanent representative of Nepal to the UN. And this session is chaired by Mr. Mohan Bahadur Basne, former Minister for Information and Communication. And we have extremely talented panelists with us. We have Mr. Narayan Wagle, Editor-in-Chief Kanthu Delhi, as a panelist for this session. We have Mr. Enamul Hawk Chaudhary, Editor-in-Chief from the Daily Sun, Bangladesh, as a panelist and Mr. Madan Lamsal, Chief Editor of New Business Magazine and Avia and Delhi. Uh, I would like to welcome all of our fantastic panelists, keynote speaker and chairperson to this session. Uh, to begin with, I would like to request Mr. Madhuraman Acharya, former Foreign Secretary and permanent representative of Nepal to the UN to deliver keynote speech. Thank you. Thank you, Samaji. Honorable Minister, Chair of this session, Her Excellency Ms. Sams, Ambassador of Bangladesh, distinguished guest, distinguished panelist, my dear friend uh, Narayan Wagleji, now a friend from Bangladesh, Namurji. Uh, I've been invited to be a keynote speaker, so I will begin with a lighter note that I don't have the key to the subjects that is being dis discussed here. I have only some notes to make. So maybe, because my experience with business is limited and my knowledge about media is next to none. So I am invited to speak on those two subjects. Uh, nonetheless, uh, I will speak on the basis of my experience uh, uh, and whatever knowledge I have gathered uh, working in the field of uh, Diplomacy Foreign Policy as Ambassador to Bangladesh uh, a long time ago, in the previous century. I don't look that old, but uh, this is a fact. Uh, and I may not be updated. It was, I was delighted to see the video. Uh, in fact, that was also not even updated, but uh, we all know, as was mentioned in the morning, uh, Bangladesh is a remarkable story, remarkable success story from the case which is when, you know, a long, long time ago when Bangladesh, you know, they became uh, independent in 1971, it was considered a, people, a country with crowded people, poor, disasters, 
uh, even some people said basket case. But now, as was mentioned several times, and I saw the booklet, it's a role model for economic development that huge transformation has taken place. Bangladesh has achieved the confidence, the, the capacity, uh, thanks to its economy, export led growth, uh, robust development model, uh, and uh, good political uh, acceleration. Uh, we have Bangladesh and Nepal, we have similar stories to share in the sense that uh, you know, we are into the similar phases of economic development in the sense that uh, we are supposed to be graduating from the poor men's club soon. Bangladesh, the group of least developed countries I mean, Bangladesh is doing so uh, with a lot of confidence. We have a little bit of hesitation about that because Bangladesh, for the first time, Bangladesh met all three criteria. Whereas in Nepal, though we met the criteria twice, but we have not met the economic criteria. So we actually, we refused to graduate. We ourselves deferred, deferred uh, to come out of that because of our political transition and uh, transition to federalism and etc. But uh, when the uh, first time around in Bangladesh uh, met the criteria, there was a huge celebration I remember in Bangladesh. There were uh, fireworks at the stadium where Prime Minister Hasina herself attended. So uh, that level of confidence, this is something we all uh, should rejoice and you know for Nepal and Bangladesh, uh, we should be able to uh, utilize this transformative change. I think I would like to commend uh, Mr. Sunil Kesi idea for bringing in this idea of uh, how do we uh, navigate the next phase so called trans the transformation in, in our economies. Why, how do we transform the level of our bilateral interaction in business basically? So there I, I think we have to first of all identify our drivers. What are the main drivers? What is the key driver of that will give us that transformation? Is it energy as was mentioned in the morning? I'm sure energy, power, trade is significantly very, very important for us and uh, we are glad that the two governments are working together, at least an agreement, AMOU has been signed for investment, but there are a lot of things remain there. What do we do with our common denominator? How do you make sure the trading takes place in power? How do we connect ourselves? In the, uh, in the morning it was being mentioned when the minister was speaking, India is trading power with Nepal, India is trading power with Bangladesh. So what prevents us from trading power with Bangladesh in that? This is not a big change required, there is connectivity already. We may need to build more dedicated lines or uh, we may have, we may need uh, better power trading arrangements or an uh, agreement kind of thing. But this is already happening. So we should be able to move into that phase. Is it connectivity, not just power? Because uh, we have to identify main drivers of our transformation. Where is it trade? Is it investment? It is connectivity? Is it power? Is it tourism? What is it that? We can, obviously we have to do everything that is possible in each of these sectors. But let us identify one or two core key sectors where we can really change the business, the way we are doing our business. The, up to now, you know, I recently came out, came out with a book called Nepal World View. I'm sure some of you have seen it. There also I have spoken a bit, uh, mentioned a bit. Up to now, the level of interaction between Nepal and Bangladesh is that we have a fraternal bond. Uh, we stand like each other. There's a lot of uh, goodwill, tremendous goodwill uh, with each other. But we have not moved beyond those uh, levels uh, into, uh, in terms of gaining the advantages that we have, the complementarities we have. Uh, and if we have not done bilaterally enough. I, I would like to thank Ambassador Sans who is here, uh, that she is doing everything uh, as is our ambassador uh, in Dhaka. Uh, our governments are doing a little bit here and there, signing double taxes and agreement signing water issues, but we have not moved into that transformational level. 
uh, you know, we meet each other through SAC or the regional board or in the UN. Ambassador was mentioning to me uh, the last time around Bangladesh foreign minister came to visit Nepal was in 1972, I guess. One year after it became independence. No Bangladesh foreign minister has come here on a bilateral visit. The first time, I, I suppose, the, or last time, uh, there was a bilateral visit from Nepal's foreign minister to Bangladesh was when I was there. Uh, Dr. Ramsar Mahat visited as foreign minister. So, we haven't done enough bilaterally. This is a very good idea. You know, rather than focusing ourselves into uh, conventional bilateral dialogue at official level, we should be doing more at the business level. And tomorrow we have this huge investment summit. I would have liked to see many more Bangladeshi investors or people from business people coming here as well as to, the, to that summit. Because now we have moved in age from, you know, a like few years ago, both Nepal and Bangladesh, we were happy hosting donor summits. Now we are hosting investor summits. This is the kind of mindset we require. We should perhaps create a joint investment zone, which will create more opportunities for our businesses. Uh, then there comes the role of the government. We have to create the favorable environment. Do we have in many uh, agreements that is required, for example, protection of business, or for example, uh, there was this talk about uh, connectivity, uh, enhancing connectivity. When I was ambassador in Bangladesh, we were uh, discussing transport, but it has not been concluded as yet. Even the things that we have tried to do, a little bit regionally or sub-regionally, has not moved beyond certain level. For example, uh, Bangladesh and India in 2010 they had a huge uh, agreement uh, which would allow Nepal and Bhutan transit through their countries and that was supposed to have transformed uh, the whole thing uh, into another level. Uh, but somehow uh, Nepal and Bangladesh, uh, Nepal and Bhutan were not party to that agreement. Uh, it has moved only between India and Bangladesh, which is good, their connectivity, there is a bust agreement between India and Bangladesh. Uh, but somehow, uh, we have not been able to benefit from those uh, big changes. In the, in, 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 once it was thought that uh, sub-regional cooperation would take off. For example, the BBI, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal. But then uh, it has become like in our Nepali message, Pailu Kasme Dunga. The first born in the first bite because uh, the transport agreement that was concluded in 2015 has not been ratified yet, yet particularly by one member state, but in Bhutan. So this has not moved beyond that. I think working sub-regionally for every, every single thing, of, uh, like I mentioned, tourism, trade, connectivity, energy, uh, investment, that is very, very important. When I was secretary, we started uh, this thing called South Asia, uh, growth quadrangle within the SAR. But that did not kick off well in the sense that some members uh, in the SAR thought that is, uh, you are making a smaller club excluding others. So we decided informally between uh, Bangladesh, India, and Nepal and Bhutan, maybe we could do this as projects, not in the SAR. So we moved this, the whole thing to uh, Asian Development Bank as project. Actually, that is where work is, most work is being done as projects. This, this thing called South Asia Sub-Regional Economic Cooperation has invested a lot, uh, billions of dollars actually, in transport, connectivity, infrastructure development. Now things have changed. Things have changed. There has been some investment there. We need, hard part of it is going well. Like I see, I, we saw in the morning, uh, in the presentation there, there is Padda Beach coming in Bangladesh. So connectivity will be better, but we need to work out a soft side of it, the agreements, the methodology, and obviously how do we deal with the common denominator, how do we bring three countries in the same page, uh, India, Nepal and Bangladesh in this case. Maybe we should also even think about, think about uh, trilateral cooperation, why not India, Bangladesh and Nepal, because the objectives that is being, uh, you know, advocated or the, the policy 
look east or neighborhood first that India has been, uh, has been uh, promoting. And the objective that we have for ourselves, connectivity, trade, at the same, there is complementarity. There is nothing wrong about that. But somehow, that is, has not moved beyond the rhetoric or the political slogan. We have to make that happen. I think uh, these are some of the points. Actually, uh, I would be, you know, I'm, I'm not in a position to be giving so much answers to the, to the questions. Actually, I will be asking for you questions. Maybe we should think about the transformative things. What is it that requires for us to move into that level? What are the main drivers? How can you, we make use of the unused potentials? How can we make use? Uh, how we can cooperate with three countries in the region? And uh, uh, that brings us to the role of the media, the next subject. Uh, you know, I, I, like I said, uh, the role of media, there is a lot that can help change the situation. The, when I was in Bangladesh, the way Bangladesh is understood about Nepal was that uh, they knew Nepal of a country first eye in the Himalayas, you know, people, hard-working people, but uh, they, had, they have little knowledge about people. I'm talking about general people, knowledge about Bangladesh and Nepal. Similarly, people in Nepal don't know Bangladesh well, even now, because we don't we don't treat each other in that way in our media is usually silent on covering each other. I'm sure there will be a coverage of this because we have media people from Mananji and Vagliji is here. But then, uh, you know, we don't see mainstream uh, coverage of uh, mainstream news about our bilateral relations. So we don't know each other. This is one of the jobs that media can do is, is to help improve, help inform each other better. This is an age of public diplomacy where you will use this huge role media can play in terms of influencing the public or informing the foreign public. Uh, we can, we can uh, you know, each other's capital, we cannot read uh, newspaper from, I cannot get a newspaper. A dear friend Emmanuel from uh, Dhaka is here, but I don't get his paper here. I have to go online. I, I have few good friends in Dhaka uh, from my time. Uh, you know, there was a, this, this guy called Mofuz Anam who used to say, they, for India there is only one neighbor, Pakistan. Rest of us are entities. And he used to say that. You know. So you know, that, that kind of communication, that kind of coverage is not there. So uh, perhaps we should consider, you know, a, a media for like business firm like this, have to have a better interaction, big media houses can come out. I get New York Times published in Kathmandu, but I cannot read uh, a newspaper uh, in Dhaka. You know, media nowadays uh, is facing huge challenge, as we know. It has huge role. My limited knowledge about this is that it can help build public opinion. It can, sometimes it can work as a watchdog, because if, it's, if the governments are not doing well, it can war. It can uh, sometimes help set agenda actually, because if the agenda is not right, it can set. So, uh, but then media itself is under attack. As you know the whole thing, how the space fake news, fake news thing, you know, somebody, a president of the United States, every time he appears in the press, he says fake news. Enemy of the media is sometimes even labeled me enemy of the people. Again, the Mainstream media, the sphere is squeezed by social media, which is not as accountable, but which is where most things are happening. Twitter, for example, President Trump, every now and then tweets. The Twitter has become a very significant model of communication. I was listening to Mike Pompeo, the Secretary of State, the other day. There was a rumor that you would be fired. And he said, no, no, I am here in the office until President Trump tweets me out. That's what he said. He said, actually said that. So, this is the sphere. And it is under squeeze, being squeezed through social media, attacked by the ministry politics. Then where do you get your speech? Because, you know, there was a time when we used to hear media 
can be used to manufacturing concept that was no if I must said, or the so-called CNN effect. You can help internationalize things and you know, small things. Nowadays, it is the media which decides what is breaking news. It decides what is crisis. If you look at, uh, if you watch televisions and which I did some and I, uh, later I could not. Uh, after Pulwama attack in India, the way they spread news, sometimes I doubt whether they are spreading information or they are manipulating information or they are spreading chaos or they are misinforming the people. You, you literally don't get what they are saying. That is not, uh, that is, you know, I'm a little bit moving beyond this subject, but uh, since we are talking about media, there has to be certain responsibilities, there are limits to it, uh, and then uh, eventually the role of media in highlighting things, informing, uh, building public opinion, working as watchdog, that should be the focus. I'm sure uh, Vagliji and Samaji and Madanji would have uh, very many uh, big ideas uh, to uh, uh, big ideas to discuss about this. You know, sometimes too much criticism of media is like what I call as shooting the messenger. If you do wrong, and then you blame the media. That is what is being done in the, around the world. Even nowadays, uh, you know, there's uh, mainstream pro, mainstream pro government, uh, anti-government thing. So the, this kind of thing should be avoided. Uh, we should rather focus on uh, core issues. What will help? Uh, because this is about building more people-to-people -people uh, relations, uh, bringing our relations from uh, down from government to business to civil society levels, track to levels. This is where media has very important role to play. I think. Uh, I would like once again to commend uh, the organizers of this uh, business forum and uh, uh, I would like to uh, conclude my few points uh, here uh, I'd be able to uh, answer any questions if that, that may arise at the end. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Madhuraman Atayo, former Foreign Secretary and permanent representative of Nepal to the UN for the inside remarks. You don't like to call it a keynote speech, I guess. Uh, thank you so much. You rightly raised a very important uh, issue. I mean, Nepal is seeking more investment partners than donors. We are having a two-day investment summit as well. And another point you rightly raised is, like, what are the core factors we need to focus with Bangladesh? Is it trade, investment, connectivity, power, or something else? So my other panelists will explain these details, I guess. And uh, to begin with, I'd like to uh, welcome Mr. Naran Wagle, a very celebrated writer and journalist, uh, to shed light on the role of media and these kind of uh, bigger issues. Mr. Acharya rightly uh, pointed out a huge problem. Like he said, uh, people in Bangladesh know Nepal as only a land of Himalay, a beautiful country. They might not know Nepal is ready for investment. Nepal can be their investment partner in so many different issues. So what have we done? What need to be done? I mean, where have we gone wrong? Uh, Mr. Wagley probably will shed light on this. And I, I have a question for him as well, because uh, in a forum like this, a journalist inside me pops out. Uh, in an era, in this period of time where we are so much obsessed with TRPs and very sensational news, do we ever care about bigger issues like bilateral ties, investment, mutual harmony between the two nations? Do we really care? That's my second question to Mr. Naran Wagley, the editor of Kathmandu Book Daily. Thank you. Thank you, Summer. You are extremely talented moderator. Thank I know you. That. <laughs> I'm going to depose me very difficult question. Uh, and I'm very happy with uh, my right, the person in my right side uh, uh, who uh, already dealt uh, most of the points in our uh, relations. Uh, thank you for touching so many points, but I, I want to begin uh, with, with the point where you ended, almost ended. Uh, you talked about uh, President 
know, Trump Street. And I have to inform this uh, hall that uh, our keynote speaker is one of the best loved tweet Twitter uh, in, in Nepal. Uh, he, I find him very witty, uh, if not the best witty uh, uh, Nepali Twitter. Uh, he is uh, yeah, obviously one of the best. Uh, he uh, tweets in a way that he deals serious and serious issues in a very funny way. He has his own words and style to deal with the complicated, the complexities of, uh, you know, everything under the sun. How many tweets do you do every day? <laughs> you, you, you maintain, you are very disciplined Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have only a couple of uh, friends in Bangladesh uh, who follow me in Twitter and I follow them in Twitter. We are poorly connected in that way. Twitter is the most effective medium today, as you rightly said. Uh, there are two aspects of, if you talk about the traditional media or the big media or the media in general, we have to talk about, you know, the small aspects of, or not exactly small, but most effective and most live uh, media. Uh, uh, Twitter is medium and by that uh, medium, uh, you, you can measure uh, the relationship, the understandings, you know. Uh, I am least informed uh, about Bangladesh and my friends in Bangladesh are least informed about Nepal. The way if, uh, you know, you, if you... Uh, <laughs> this is the uh, most funny tweet subject for you today. <laughs> Uh, exactly. <laughs> you, you, you always think about the next week. Yeah, exactly. And you raised a couple of beautiful points like uh, where are we in Nepal today? Uh, we always covered about uh, Drona Summit. In our journalist life, we covered, we gave so much headlines, so many headlines we made about Donor Summit, now we are writing about Investment Summit, you right to say it. Uh, the other point, interesting point is uh, whether we are uh, enhancing or we are, uh, you know, developing or we, we, we still hold these bilateral engagements, are we serious about it, you know. Mm, and the basic uh, point uh, which I do take care of is uh, you, you, you already charged is the general knowledge uh, of each other in both of our countries. In Nepal, uh, our Bangladesh, we do have very stereotype um, mindset. In Bangladesh, I guess so, because we are, we are least uh, understood, because we communicate with each other very less. Uh, yes, we, we publish New York Times from Kathmandu. Uh, we don't get daily star, uh, and we don't publish Kathmandu Post or Kantipu in uh, Dhaka. This is one. The other is we don't have a foreign correspondence in either of our capitals. We don't have. A, no, we don't. I, I don't think there is a single Nepali correspondent, full-time correspondent in Dhaka, and the same way, not a single Bangladeshi uh, correspondent reporter uh, in Kathmandu. It shows our, you know, relationship. We are too close uh, because we, I, I, I'd love to say that we are just a chicken neck away, uh, you know, Bangladesh and uh, Nepal. We are that close, but still we are too far because we don't write uh, uh, to each other. Uh, and we don't have the columnists, not only the reporters, full-time reporters, Forget about the full-time uh, reporters. We don't have uh, columnists. We don't have commentators. We don't have analysts to write about. Like you know, I edit uh, Kantipu. I don't find a Nepali or any uh, analyst, commentator, open writer uh, who is you know uh, a Bangladeshi expert. 
who could explain our readers about what's happening in Bangladesh. I guess same same thing you know uh, uh, is being faced by our, our fellows in uh, Dhaka. We, we have a senior editor from Bangladesh here today uh, who could uh, share some of his thoughts uh, on it. Uh, that is one, and uh, the other is uh, yes, you rightly said that we need uh, for that. This is a reality. Yes, for that, what would you do? You know, one idea is uh, we could uh, have some media forums, bilateral media forums, where it is reporters, you know, for uh, different um, working for different mediums could come together to talk about the you know the issues, um, and at least we could uh, interact uh, regularly. Uh, this is one uh, good idea, but I really don't know the business model. Who could help us? Uh, the embassies uh, in both capitals could be of any help. I really don't know. You have been a mystery there uh, already. Uh, but we, we need to have some sort of you know, uh, engagements uh, there. Uh, the other uh, tendency in uh, both of our uh, our uh, capitals uh, is that uh, we are not talking more about the matters mattering more, about the issues which matter more. Uh, if you talk about Nepal and Bangladesh, what uh, matters more? For, for me, uh, my first impression would be like, you know, uh, we are uh, water relation. Uh, we have a water bondage, Bangladesh and Nepal. Uh, any Bangladesh uh, journalist or editor could be provoked if you give some hints about what's happening in Nepal about the climate. Any uh, uh, editor, you know, in Bangladesh would be, you know, uh, could be happy to have a reporter sending here with, with a good budget cover what's happening in, uh, you know, uh, in, the, in the climate, uh, in, the, in the mountains, because that matters most uh, to uh, Bangladesh. Uh, we, we send snow melting water to you, and you send us back with, with the clouds. Uh, that way, I'm converting to uh, water again. Uh, but what's happening, see, what's happening in Nepal, in my newspaper today, we have two serious, very serious issues. One is in uh, the great lake called Rara. The hundreds of, at least there are 300 springs coming into, coming to fill uh, the lake. Almost all of them are dried up. Rara, and the same thing is happening in Kosciuszko. And uh, just a couple of days back, in, uh, we, we covered uh, about the rhinos, you know. They are coming out of the National Park, Chiton National Park, because, uh, because of the temperature, because the whales, basically the ponds, they swim, the rhinos, the ponds have dried up. And they don't have enough bushes, in, enough food inside the park. And this is the very nature of park, to give the animals, the wild animals, uh, you know, everything they need. And we are already against uh, the very uh, reason why we established the National Park. So these are very visible changes we are going through uh, in Nepal. Same thing might have happened in Bangladesh. And that way we could, we could cover and we could convince, we could uh, communicate with, uh, with uh, each other uh, very, in a very effective way. Uh, this is uh, something which uh, I wanted to highlight. Uh, because climate is uh, being uh, one of the most politically charged uh, topics today, if not the most polit uh, politically charged. Everything is uh, linked today with it, you know. The politics is there, uh, and the business, of course, you know. The biggest industry in Nepal today, for me, if you allow me to, be, to speak very lightly, is that the exploitation of the natural resources, 
uh, is the biggest uh, industry today in Nepal. Uh, and you know, in the in the in the, in the climate, uh, what is that? The politics, the business. You mean the natural resources? In the natural resources, everything is there. Nationalism, the most dangerous aspect of um, uh, the question is the nationalism now is being linked to the very idea or the very asset of natural resources uh, and there is this right wing tendency and why I call it uh, the I call the nationalism nationalism is uh, with it because there is already a black and white uh, the, the tendency of uh, posing a very black and white question if you talk about the complexities of the ecosystem, very black and white, like if you, if you write something about uh, the environment or any issue linked to uh, the ecosystem, uh, there is a populist question you, know, you have to face, is that are you a pro-development or pro-environment? Are you a pro-tree or pro-development? You know? That kind of black and white tendency is already there. If I tell something like, you know, this is something I'm facing here in Kathmandu, uh, most probably, I guess, the wise readers in Bangladesh would get connected very easily, very effectively. So I, I feel that we are living in more dangerous time because the situation is being more black and white. Uh, and what can we do? We Maximum we can do, we tell our stories, very nuanced, very in-depth stories, and we could at least convince the other side that, see, there are so human stories, and we can get connected with each other. This is uh, what I was, I wanted to, to share here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Narno Wagley, editor of editor in chief, Kanti uh, Thank you for such a warm compliment. It's always a joy to listen to him and to read him as a journalist and a writer as well. Uh, he raised some of very important issues, but I think he, one point that struck me is like, why do we don't talk about matter that matters most? What is hindering us? I think that question can be answered by Naran Wadley himself. Why do we don't talk about matter that matters most? Who is obstructing us? Can you just give a slight hint, very briefly? Thank you. Uh, beautiful. That's why I'm calling you uh, the most talented moderator. A beautiful question. Very difficult to answer from my position. Yes, there is a tendency that not talking. It is very easy not to, not to talk about the most important thing. It is very easy to talk about the most fascinating thing, the most popular things. Uh, writing about the politics, writing about the nationalism, writing about the public's favorite thing is the most, uh, you know, favorite subject of the public also. Uh, this is, uh, if you publish one uh, popular history, your newspaper will be sold, your newspaper will get more ads, you will have more, uh, uh, you know, readers, more editors, titles will follow you, more subscribers, uh, and, you know, will follow you, will come to you. The same thing, you know, uh, I wanted to talk, you know, uh, link it with, uh, in uh, Twitter, the medium called, very fashionable medium called Twitter. If you tweet a very popular uh, thing, you will have more retweets, more, um, uh, you know, uh, in endorsement, more likes. There is this right-wing tendency, there is this most dangerous uh, tendency of asking questions or thinking in black and white terms. And here, I, I really think that the media, the role of media, you know, uh, is failing. Yes, I agree. That's why I'm uh, struggling every day to bring out some different stories in my newspaper. Talk about 
you know, beyond the airlines, talk about the environment, talk about the society. If you don't uh, write anything about the conservation, you will see in your lifetime the society won't have any conversation. For the safe, you know, for the safeguardment of uh, conservation, conversation, you need to conserve, you need to preserve the best thing of, of, uh, the, nature, of the system. So, if you talk about anything like the rhinos are coming out of the park and there is a politics, the politics, like the Prime Minister, what happens to him? The Prime Minister loves, loves to talk about the rhinos, how the name itself is, you know, the name, where uh, does the name come from? He spent 10, 15 minutes, you know, and he was, you know, there were, there were claps. But he didn't or anyone in the position doesn't talk about, want to listen any story about why the rhinos are coming out of the park. So we need to, we need to, we need to struggle with ourselves, with our own uh, systems. Um, we need to be more wise uh, for the sake of our own duty and responsibility, I guess. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, that's a real struggle for all of us to figure out the difference between popularity and qualities. Uh, most of the time, issues uh, media are covering as popular um, issues might not be that important as well. So it's very tricky which one is popular, which one is important. So the struggle goes on. Uh, thank you so much for your insight thought. Uh, I'd like to welcome our next speaker, Mr. Enamul Hak Chaudhary. He is Editor-in-Chief from Bangladesh uh, Daily Sun. Uh, sir, welcome to Nepal. It's a great pleasure to have you here in this conversation. Um, I would like to ask you one question. A lot of time we hear in media in Nepal, I guess it works in Bangladesh as well, we are only interacting within the frame set by bigger countries. I don't have to name the big countries. Are the big countries agenda dominating smaller countries uh, like us? Uh, and also the editorial <coughs> direction about neighboring countries what can we do to set our own priorities, agenda, as a media person? Your thought on this. Good morning to you all. And personally, I highly appreciate and welcome the invitation to me by the organizers, by the embassy of Bangladesh in Nepal. I congratulate the Honorable Minister here, Honorable Former Secretary here, and other panelists here. I express my heartfelt thanks for this program. At least media has been included for the first time in this forum. And there's the important task that decision was taken. Mm -hmm. Personally, at this moment, my speech will be very limited, very small. I heard a written speech, I dropped it, just on extempo, I am giving you some few points. One is, I was honorable for my foreign secretary here, he was ambassador to Bangladesh, he was permanent ambassador to New York. So, he had some important role to play in the past, but I am a little bit critical to him. He didn't play because in this, in during his tenure, either here or there, he could involve the media exchange, media understanding in both the countries, but he did not get. They are thinking, their eyes are with the one side in the office. But they were not thinking the pro people sentiments. What actually people want, they never think of. <coughs> Definitely, if they could do the exchange of media between the two countries, exchange of this source of discussions 
between the two countries, not only in Kathmandu, even in Dhaka also, definitely the result will go to the business, will go to the trade promotion, business promotion. And business promotion is interrelated with the mass people contact and communications. Involvement is there. And people will be fully aware of Kathmandu and ne World Nepal and fully aware of our, the other part in Bangladesh also. The same thing, vice versa. Uh, it is very disappointing. Bangladesh is liberated 48 years ago, but so far the joint working group between the two countries was not developed. Why it is? It's very unfortunate. If joint working group is there, foreign secretaries from here, foreign secretaries from Bangladesh will exchange views every year, this side and that side. And they will discuss the project wise issues, even different side issues, even different project issues. But they were allowed to discuss because this joint working group was not developed. It is very disappointing, it was. Number two, regional grouping. When the present government in Bangladesh came up, and at that time I was in Bangladesh mission in Delhi, the Her Excellency Ambassador in Kathmandu, now Bangladesh Ambassador, she was also in Delhi. At that time we worked hard for the bilateral promotion exchange of journalists, exchange of common people, exchange of intellectuals in different types of programs. But I believe if both the, if both the government is serious about the joint working group, about the projects, about the regional exchange of different section of people, even culture, even culture teams, exchange of all these things, frequently that could be better. I personally had requested the then ambassador in Dhaka, Nepalese ambassador in Dhaka, to publish a feature on promotion of Nepal, particularly the tourism and other interesting issues. But I didn't get support from the embassy. Why it is? I was not asking money. I was not asking for financial benefits. <clears throat> On my emotion I was asking for. But I didn't get very less response from this side. So I believe that foreign of his people should be support for people, should be supportive to the people and that's supported to the people through media. A lot of trade bodies are do working, but it could be more, it could be increased much more if the media support and cooperation is involved. Along with, despite all these things, the trade promotion between the two countries, particularly Bangladesh and Nepal, has increased a lot. According to the latest data, in 2019, the export from Bangladesh to Nepal was 8.79 million, and import from Nepal to Bangladesh was 43.14 million. It was negative to Bangladesh. But right now, Export from Bangladesh to Nepal 43.30, it is last year. And import from Nepal to Bangladesh 10.1 million. So it is positive to Bangladesh. But we don't want to say Bangladesh is in positive mood and Nepal is in negative mood. We want the balance that trade relations. The relations involved with the private sector. 
what kind of private sector movement is there? I believe the chambers are not working properly on both sides. And the pro business people, private people, those who are doing the business, they are not supportive to each other. The other thing, someone has pointed out that the relations with uh, some other big countries has increased much more. It is, it is practically real, uh, reality. It's never, they have enough blue ratings, they are exporting to you, they are exporting to us. And people are buying. If people is buying, how can you stop it? You can't. You can't force anybody else to buy this one or that one. What he likes, he will buy. But we must have to have the promotional programs. Oh, much more, in a bigger way. So in this type, context, I can offer one thing. If Nepal government or embassy wants to do some similar, some similar programs or some other programs, from my office, I will extend 100% support to promote this program, this kind of program. If want, they want to host, uh, do some sort of seminar or a symposium or some other things, I can be the sponsor in Takapar, no problem at all. So it cannot be one-sided because I don't have personal interest. As I can extend the personal interest. So, I can help with the venue, I can help with the food, organizing everything, but someone has to take the initiative and interest. If from the Nepal government or the Nepal uh, embassy in Dhaka, even our embassy in Kathmandu, if some initiatives are there, I will, I will extend my whole heart support to make the program a success. Thanks a lot for inviting me again. Thank you all. Thank you, uh, Mr. Emmanuel Hokchaudhry, Editor-in-Chief, Daily Sun from Bangladesh. Thank you for your inside remarks with a lot of statistics as well. Um, he rightly said, uh, if no one is interested, I think the media should have high interest on it. So because media is all about giving voice to voiceless people, issues, and it's all about giving uh, voice to unheard issues. Uh, if the business communities, government agencies are not working, then there is a huge burden in media their media can play a role, a lead role, I guess. Um, media can always push, lobby, or remind government in enhancing bilateral ties and some other major important issues. Uh, moving ahead now, I would like to invite our next panelist, Mr. Madan Lamsal, the chief editor of New Business Magazine and Avian Delhi. Uh, I believe the relationship between Nepal and Bangladesh dates back centuries and is based on cultural, historical, uh, linguistic and religious linkages. But having said that, somehow the tremendous potential for expanding and diversifying uh, trade between these two nations is not explored by media or it has gone unheard. So as a media, what role can we play? My question to Mr. Lamsal. Thank you, Sudhazi. Session Chair and Distinguished Panelist on the DAS, uh, Your Excellency, friends in the audience. Uh, I think uh, media has a very, very big role to play. Though I don't know <coughs> if media can really go beyond its uh, job especially media is a mirror. It shows where are the lackings, it shows where are the opportunities. So based on that, I will uh, talk about 
mainly in four uh, points. That is, what we have between Bangladesh and Nepal, and how could we have that, and uh, what media can really play a role in that. When we talk about Nepal-Bangladesh relation, uh, there are mainly four, three, four areas we have been working so far. One is definitely in trade and commerce. I know uh, energy minister was in the morning. He has been trying very hard to at least do something in hydropower sector. And uh, that is one area we all know, but things have not been moving uh, because of number of reasons, which must have of snow. And the second area is the commerce. In commerce, it's uh, export and it's import, as Mr. Chaudhary also already talked about the data. We have been now importing more than uh, exporting, and if we have hydropower, we may be exporting more than importing. But uh, more than that, we need to have harnessing the opportunities that we have not been doing so far. For example, in the past, we always talked about the garment industry. Nepal was doing extremely well. Now, where is garment industry in Nepal and where Bangladesh is today? There are lessons to be learned. And uh, I know only few items we have been importing from Bangladesh. All of us know the pran brands doing very well in Nepal. Uh, similarly, in uh, education sector, Many of our students are going to Bangladesh for medical study and uh, in journalism also there are many students doing very well there and coming back and um, sharing their knowledge. What we have not been talking is the tourism. I know Bangladeshi, many Bangladeshi uh, friends wants to come to the hilly area to enjoy the mountain and coldness of Nepal, uh, warmness of hospitality of the people, but coldness in the uh, Himalayas. But nobody is playing that role. Uh, recently, there was a discussion among the tourism-related organizations that why not do something for the Bangladesh. Then I have an organization that is taking the lead role to organize one also, in a few months' time, we are doing that. And uh, Samaji also asked about the culture. Normally, Bangladesh is a small, small, small Islamic state mm -hmm. public, and uh, Nepal used to be Hindu state, but now it's secular. And uh, but uh, many uh, majority of Hindus are living here. But one very interesting and common. Uh, uh, assimilation is there, that is the language. You know, Bangladeshi people have very fantastic accent. They speak very beautiful uh, uh, Sanskrit if they are requested to do. Because uh, our language, Bangla, Bangla language with Nepali is very much similar. And it's very easy, easily learnable. And uh, can we leverage in that when we talk about the culture? And another interesting thing that is that in Bangladesh also there are many Hindus living and in Nepal also there are many Muslims living and societies are very much in a very close harmony. Sometimes there are some issues, it is but natural. Therefore, uh, exchanges is not happening. I have been in this profession, media profession, for the last 28 plus years. I have had more than dozen of times uh, presentations on India-Nepal trade and this and that in India, but I have never been to Bhutan. It's my fault, of course, but I'm planning. Sorry, uh, Bangladesh. Um, uh, I have done many presentations in India, but not in, uh, in other countries also, but not in Bhutan. I have not never been to Bhutan. Sorry, but Bangladesh, Bangladesh. <laughs> this BBIN always confuses me. I was in the session in BBIN last month also. Anyway, so main issue is the connection. We talked about the Manglabang port of Bhutan, Bangladesh. It did not happen. 
it is not really moving. Why it is not moving? Bangladesh, 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 Bangladesh. <laughs> now I have to So, the, uh, Mr. Acharya talked about the BBI and uh, MBA agreement because Bhutan has not ratified, therefore it did not happen. Bhutan, it's Bhutan. Bhutan not, has not ratified motor vehicle agreement, therefore BBIN is not moving for its objective. Therefore, what can media do about it? There are many associations related to media. There are associations in Bangladesh, there are associations in Nepal, in different level. In uh, owner to owner level, in journalist level, and uh, uh, television associations and print associations. Can we have exchanges of the visits? But why to visit? Why to have exchanges? What exactly we need? That is, one, what are the areas that really important matters for Nepal and Bangladesh? As I mentioned, uh, the tourism, uh, commerce, investment, education, uh, and uh, of course, uh, in government also, in the, when we talk about trade, why not we have some uh, machinery, some lessons, some management, uh, you know, transfer from the Bangladesh to Nepal. So if media can focus their writing, their uh, presentations, uh, even in online, even in television or in other different mediums, about those areas, focused areas, then that could help both of the countries, both of the, you know, areas. And uh, uh, another thing that uh, Mr. Achare, our keynote speaker today, talked about, very important point is, maybe sometime we should not only talk about uh, Bangladesh and Nepal, we should talk about trilateral cooperation, that is very important. The reason is, whatever we talk among the SAR countries, if we cannot bring the India on board, we cannot move forward. That, that is the lesson you all know. Talk about Mangalaban port or many or, or any other issues, even the hydropower agreement that we are having now. If we cannot convince India, if we cannot bring them on board, maybe sometime we cannot achieve the things that we really want. Therefore, uh, now what media have been doing is, mainly media have been giving coverage of the big political events, be it in Bangladesh or in Nepal. Uh, but my, as a business economic journalist, I would always request that, yes, politics is important, there are lessons to be learned, but mainly trade and commerce should happen. If there is no business, then uh, it's only talking. Therefore, uh, me being a media, and we are talking about the media seminar, uh, that how can media play a role, so finally, what I would like to uh, for, uh, request is, can we create a mechanism, maybe a club, maybe a you know, sister uh, organization agreements of different uh, media associations, and uh, visit, a, visit visits, different visits, and talk only about those areas where we can really, you know, uh, uh, help to get that objective, as uh, Naranji said, uh, what matters, the, uh, what are the matters that matters most to both of the uh, uh, countries' people. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Madan Lamsal, Chief Editor, New Business Magazine and Avian Delhi. I think we are already running out of time, so I would like to make it short as possible as I can. Um, so with this, I would like to thank all our wonderful panelists and keynote speaker for their great views and for their time as well. With this, I'd like to go for Q&A section. Uh, if you have any question, a query, suggestion or anything, the floor is open. And after that, we'll hear some remarks from chairperson as well and then we conclude. So now the floor is open. If you have any queries, question, you can put your question. Thank you.
Thank you, that was a wonderful panel. So I'm Prajwal Bikram Bista. Uh, you I would love to come. So we talked about a lot of issues and then I would like to say about this one particular thing which I'm still not convinced. And I believe that the people in this floor, inside this hall even are not convinced that. And we talked about we need to do this thing. We need to develop the connectivity through media and all the system. But a youth walking inside the road of Kathmandu, right? He falls, he falls in the road. He is busted with people. He sleeps in mud. Why would he think about Bangladesh media? Why should I follow those media? Right? He's a layman worker living in Bangladesh. He has his own job. Maybe he goes to fishing. Maybe he's an entrepreneur. But then why has he need to follow media? So I would really love to know. Besides those core issues, the climate change, all these issues, they are even covered by the big medias. But then why do we need to follow this thing? Because I'm not convinced and there are there any other ways, the calls for actions that we can do right now, maybe setting up a youth. Because I am free and I, I believe to use we are free and then we can even use some time to take it. So I would request all the panel, if someone would bring some ideas for call for action, what can we do right now and decide a maybe movement for what? Because after going out of here, we are going to forget all these things. So my first question would be to the uh, chief editors from the two media houses. So what might be the issues and what is an individual you two guys are doing to solve these issues? Because you are on there, you have that responsibility to bring youth like us. So that is my question to you too. And uh, to uh, the sirs, other sirs, right? What can be the call for action which we can do to bring the youth inside this hall in a program that will draft this thing away? Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question as well. I think we'll go for answer in a while. Well, uh, thank you. My name is Lakshman Dutta. I lead uh, media acts in Nepal. I'm often traveling in Bangladesh and Nepal. I have been in faculty of journalism at Uni University of Kham for many years. It's good listening to you. Uh, it's wonderful sending many insights, but we take excuses when you are not in positions. I know uh, Mr. Acha representing very, very great insights in fact about the role of the media that could play. You no, know, it is not that we don't have connections. There are many connections as such. I was expecting to mission Mr. Wagner and Mr. Mamsha, also uh, the editor of a Bangladesh newspaper. Something good initiatives that have already been taken place in Nepal. He briefly touched upon the issues of medical education, journalism and education. There are more than 30 graduates. They have already done with their masters and master's degrees from Bangladesh. In the recent years, I'm talking about the last five or ten years. Some of them went through the research and post office studies as well. There are many forums who have seen the freedom of speech and human rights crisis. And yet, I praise Kantipu Delhi and other newspapers that they come in front when it comes to the freedom of speech issue, that of Bangladesh. At a time when Bangladesh is expecting to graduate itself into middle income country, also Nepal is expecting to do so. And by 2041, Bangladesh is expecting itself to be at the developed world. Don't you think, and if all of you, that becoming a developed country requires you know, some, some actions that are the protection of human rights. We have learned many similarities, but we don't have similarities that we can go in one place. And we should not expect you know, uh, to be similar, because there are diverse issues. There are many editorials written in our newspapers that of the political power, but I can see you know, the changes next day that of the editorial power. But Bangladesh it happened, though it was negative. It happened in Bangladesh. I saw, I saw one of my students at the University of Dhaka working as a breeze reporter. My question to Mr. Wagner, are you appointing a breeze reporter? It was, it was confusing for me to know about breeze reporter who looks after the you know, overhead breezage, uh, uh, the tunnels, and the road construction. So there are many issues that we can you know, connect among. But we have to think about the role that media could play. But media's role is not as such, you know, favoring something that someone pushes you to do something. 
it, it is the open science. But there are many, many other things which are, you know, we, we, we should respect the diversity of these two nations. There are many connections happening every day. Thank you. I, I request you to make your question specific. You know, uh, Seminars this year only. There are many conversations taking place, but all we have to do is uh, we have to think about the, uh, our editorial policies, like how can we link up these issues. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. In the meantime, I'd like to request all of you to make your question specific, not the vague one. And we are going for the last question as we are already running out of time. Please make it very short. Uh, it's me, advocate Navi Gurnari. So I have a note to make. Um, uh, I firmly believe that uh, the concerned embassy now they have to start some uh, you know exchange program, professional exchange program. For instance, I as a lawyer practicing law in Nepal, I want to know the legal system of Bangladesh. I don't have any you know uh, uh, the you know uh, platform to go there and to learn those. Uh, you know, their experience. So, uh, so as like this example, so uh, the journalist, the lawyer, and these sorts of professionals should have, a, you know, uh, should get a, a better platform from the concerned embassy uh, to interact and to know each other. And uh, I have a, another note to uh, uh, add is like this sorts of platform should have. Uh, I, I expect to have some Bangladesh people, Bangladesh people to be here uh, uh, so that we could get uh, in touch and discuss on our matter. So I see mostly uh, like the Nepali people. We have, in okay. fact we have our excellency. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I, I expect a lot of people in number. So uh, that's my note to ask. So you want your question to be answered by the people from embassy yes, or the panelists? Or Mr. Emmanuel. It's better from the ambassador. Yeah, one second. Ah. Yeah. Embassy is the role of facilitator, not the executor. You know? So embassy cannot execute all these things. If some organization organizes some programs with some other bodies over there, they will help you how to go and issue visas and can give some guidance. All these things, like a facilitator, right? this is the role of embassy. They are not a trading body, so they cannot execute anything. Am I right? As because I am replying on behalf of the embassy, because I work in the embassy for some time. Because of that, I know all these things. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chaudhary. Uh, let me first uh, uh, congratulate all the panelists. My name is Mohan Dhone. You know, one thing that has been agitating me, I was, of course, I spent four years in Bangladesh from 1987 to 1991. And, of course, and we had already joined SARC. Bangladesh, you know, now, of course, we are eight members. Uh, when I was there, you know, in, in Dhaka, uh, no Indian newspapers were available there. Uh, whereas, you know, in Nepal, every day we can we can read uh, the Times of India, the Hindustan Times, and other weeklies, etc. Nothing of that sort. I, I don't. I wonder whether now these the newspapers are available in Dhaka this day because I left in 1991, that's what. So, when we talk about connectivity, connectivity not in terms of a, a free flow of goods and people, but also free flow of information. And information means uh, the exchange of uh, media, uh, in particularly print media. So, why not, you know, why, why can't our government to post um, uh, the Republica, the Malayan Times, uh, go into Dhaka. And in the way, same way, there are very well-known uh, English newspapers there. I think Mr. Chaudhary also represents that, uh, that group. So we should give some attention uh, to this issue also. Let's, let's have, you know, we all belong to the Saad fraternity. 
And uh, why can't SARC member states uh, have uh, this kind of facility? This is, this is very, for me, it is a very crucial issue. Uh, thank you. Very quickly, I request all of you to make it very short. And I think this is the last question. Hello, my name is Laura Slama. I work as an uh, university. Uh, my very certain quick note is I heard two points that was very much kind of pessimistic from the Paris. The one was like a South cannot do anything without India. The one remarks. The other remarks was like uh, we or the neighbor country are treated like an ETD, not like a neighbor, except Pakistan. So my concern is is always that India is a kind of a power player in the South Asia. So isn't it a time for us, like all these French countries, small countries, to think about like Bevo in India? So maybe in this kind of forum or maybe with a bilateral kind of issue, we also need to discuss like what if India is not cooperating? How can we work together? There should be some other means and maybe isn't it like a time for us to think even on that way? Thank you. This is the question for all the panelists. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so I think with this we come to an end of question and answer session. Uh, Mr. President wants to know, why do we need to know what's happening in Bangladesh where we have so many unheard issues here? I guess I pointed out his question correctly. Uh, anyone wants to respond on this? Why do we need to know things happening in Bangladesh whereas uh, we have so many unheard stories here? Mr. Prozor wants to know. Yeah, Prozorji, as a media person, uh, you know, there are, every individual has his or her, uh, you know, area of interest. In media, you get uh, from sports to tourism to political issues to so many issues. So, if you are interested in certain things that is not happening elsewhere, it is happening in Bangladesh. For example, there are many, many startup companies coming in Bangladesh. They are doing miracles. I just mentioned about the garment industry. Actually, Bangladesh was far behind Nepal in garment business in the past, but now where Bangladesh is in and where Nepal is today, you know. Therefore, if we can, we should always read uh, the newspapers or media uh, coverages from the elsewhere also. And Bangladesh being our very close neighbor and very integral part of our BBIN or SAR countries uh, is very useful to us. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madanji. I hope that quenches your uh, query as well. And uh, Mohanji wants to know why the exchange of views and ideas via media is lacking in both the countries. I think who, Mr. Narayan? For, for, the, for the first question, sorry. Uh, for the first question, I have a very quick answer. Why we have to know about Bangladesh? Because we are a water family, as I rightly, uh, in the, said in the beginning. We are a water family. And you have to know about your everything about the neighborhood. You have to know your neighbor, to know yourself. That's why you have to understand others. You have to read others. That is uh, uh, the answer I wanted to give. Uh, about the question you probably you uh, ask is where is the accent? Why don't you talk about the accent? And for me to uh, say anything about is my best answer would be uh, writing is the accent, my dear. Writing, my duty to write. So I'm writing. This is action. So this is my duty. Thank you. And the next question was why the accents of views and ideas, why media is lacking in both the countries. I guess that was the question raised by Mr. Mohanji. Why don't we share ideas and news uh, from the people of Bangladesh? Why don't we do here most often? This is the uh, uh, the way we are moving. We are moving away from uh, the uh, real questions. We are not facing. We are moving away. You know, we are avoiding uh, uh, the immediate uh, you know uh, questions. Like my business model has been so, and is going to be so. If I continue uh, this way. I'm not going to deal the very pertinent questions. You know, this is business model I'm talking about. It is the same in Bangladesh, which lacks 
serious issues from Nepal. It's the same case in Nepal. You know, my uh, our, our newspapers which lack serious issues from uh, Bangladesh. This is the business model. I just want to add one more point on that. Uh, we are the we are living in the era of uh, communication revolution. That's what they say. Uh, there are so many other options also available, you know, uh, to know about what's happening elsewhere. Uh, and more than that, Naranji rightly said that we have not been able to uh, attract uh, those readers from Bangladesh uh, in Nepal's case or uh, from Nepal to in case of the Bangladesh. So, is there any business opportunity for the media owners? That is another question. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Andy. One second. Just want to add one thing. That is, media is not creating the news for the people. The business bodies, the corporate bodies, the, the tourism bodies, and other related bodies, they are doing business. If they communicate it to the media, media will publish it and publish it. If the concerned bodies are not communicating to the media, media cannot invent it. So this is the role of vice versa with the business bodies, with the governments, and with the media. Thank you. But, uh, what I also think is, once we have you know, uh, more connectivity in different sectors, automatically the media also will uh, start uh, you know, uh, covering each other's uh, contents. I think Mr. Acharya wants to add a few words. Thank you, Samaji. Not posing any questions to me and not redirecting any questions towards me that uh, makes my life easier. Uh, but uh, a thought came to my mind uh, when the floor was uh, five. You know, in terms of what do we need, to, where do we need to move into action beyond the words? or uh, beyond what we say, that needs to be done, that needs to be done. There, I think my uh, important suggestion for this forum would be, we have to move ahead with some in-depth studies. What we are doing at the moment is mentioning some political rhetoric, what we think this can be, this can be good, this can be done. But, you know, without having a very in-depth study and evidence, we cannot move into policy directions and attract business people. For example, you know, what they did between India and Bangladesh, there was a study which showed that one truck going via Shiliguri uh, <coughs> to Agartala from Calcutta would take about $600, whereas you know, you, you go to via Calcutta, you get around 400 So every truck you are saving certain amount of money. So that kind of information, that kind of study, in our leaders, are used to pronouncing rhetoric, trilateral cooperation, double digit growth, transit economy, you know, land link economy. That cannot happen unless you move into the realm of exact studies, in depth data analysis, and you know, so that really this is about attracting business. Where people will be attracted? They need to know hardcore information, they need to know facts. That's why we are hosting this big uh, investment summit, so that we have all the facts and figures and the policies available. Uh, on the table. Uh, the second point is why we need to know what India and know, know in Nepal and Bangladesh each other, why do we need to know better? You know, if we know, we need to know each other, but then we are not informing each other well, then we are probably applying self-censorship, which is a problem in the media. You know, we, if there is something in India, there is a coverage about election, the Bangladesh election, there was no coverage here as if we are not interested about that. So uh, that kind of self-censorship media should also come out. You know, for us who work in the field of the government and diplomacy, you know, I was reading an outcome from the conclave in uh, Israeli diplomats and they said, if you do something and if it does not come out in the media, it is as good as you have not done anything. So you have to be able to come out in the media and to tell the public that what you are doing. Similarly, you know, if you have done big things, if you have big mistakes, it will come. But smaller things sometimes tend to uh, disappear. So uh, we have to put those pieces together to inform the public better. I think that would be my, my last point. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Achai. I 
about to pose you a question because as you work as a foreign secretary as well. Uh, Mr. Navras Tamang wants to know, can SAAC move without India? Why India is acting in center in every forum? Uh, cannot we think beyond India? That was a question posed by Mr. Navras Tamang and I want this question to be answered by uh, Mr. Acharya. But uh, I mentioned about that already. Uh, obviously, you know, we all of us are in a situation where in a region where only India has direct boundary with all of us. With Bangladesh, between Nepal and Bangladesh, we don't have a direct land boundary. Between Nepal and Bhutan, we don't have. So India is common denominator for all of us. Whatever we are talking about, connectivity, trade, investment, even tourism, bus travel. Uh, or, uh, or even energy cooperation, transmission line, uh, it requires India's cooperation. What India is mentioning, and the point I was trying to stress is, what they have been advocating for better integration, better look east, neighborhood first, should come into action. What we are saying in terms of our connectivity, and those aims are not different. There is huge complementarity there. So uh, perhaps uh, what we have so far, what we have done in this field is, is doing through SAC, which has not moved well. BBIN has not moved well. Uh, bilaterally, Nepal and Bangladesh have no issue with India because we have other issues, but on this count. So what? Why can't we move ahead in trilateral fashion? India is like I mentioned already trading power with Bangladesh, trading power with Nepal. But why can't we three countries trade together? So the, this kind of maybe next time around maybe we should invite forum for uh, trilateral media and business forum so that they would also help realize, uh, pressurize, the, you know, push their governments towards moving to, to this direction. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm constantly being reminded by our organizers that we are really running out of time as we have the next session as well and it's themed as expanding multimodal connectivity for mutual economic growth. I thank our keynote speaker, fantastic panelists as well and last but not the least we have our former Minister for Information and Communication, Mr. Mohan Bahadur Bhastet as a chairperson and I would like to thank him for sitting with us so patiently and now I would like to request Mr. Mohan Bahadur Basnit uh, to make a few remarks as chairperson. Thank you. Thank you so much. Distinguished <coughs> uh, guest on DAS, my left side and right side, distinguished guest on for um, Her Excellency Ambassador of Bangladesh to Nepal and other senior officers from Embassy, senior journalists and writers and young energetic and high, highly qualified participants. Um, I would like to thank the organizer. Uh, it is a great opportunity for me to be here. So, I want to talk a few words in Nepal. In Nepal, Nepal has been in the world for a long time. ठुलो सम्मेलन गरेर नेपालको आर्थिक समृद्धिमा फड्को मार्ने काम गर्ने सिलसिलामा सरकार लागिरहेको बेलामा आयोजक साथीहरुले नेपाल बङ्गलादेश को बहु आयामिक रिलेशन का बारेमा र मिडिया को भूमिका का बारेमा अत्यन्तै राम्रो एउटा कार्यक्रम यहाँ गर्नु भएको छ यसका लागि म हार्दिकताका साथ आवार प्रकट करना चाहूँ सो धन्यवाद देना चाहूँ मम्मी रोजिला चिंतुपाल सब में थी तो मलाई 
हमारा सीनियर लॉयर बार एसोसिएशन का चेयरपर्सन भी हो शेरबहादुर केसी जी को मैं फोन पाए तो आयोजक साथी को फोन पाए आए मैं नपाई भे मैं मिस करने रहु भाग कि हमारा दिग्गज विद्वान साथी जल्ले मीडिया को क्षेत्र में कूटनीति को क्षेत्र में औद्योगिक क्षेत्र में सब क्षेत्र में महत्वपूर्ण एटा योग्यता हासिल कर मूलुक कई दिन क्रम में आभाव क्षेत्र में महत्वपूर्ण भूमि का निर्वाह कर साथी आज को सन्दर्भ में जो कि अभिव्यक्ति दूर धर मूलुक का फलदायी नेपाल बांग्लादेश रिनेसन का लगी कोशी ढुंगा साबित होना सकता भाई मैं लग रही धन्यवाद दिन चाहूँ इस तरफ भी मो आज को विषय दुईटा क्षेत्र में राखे मोरी कुछ राखन चाहूँ एटा ने बांग्लादेश को रिनेसन को सन्दर्भ जो बांग्लादेश सीक्न पर्ने विषय रो कुछ आज को हमारा महत्वपूर्ण वक्ता चाहे नेपाल का सीनियर लेखक जर्नालिस्ट हो वा बांग्लादेश का वहाँ बार धर महत्वपूर्ण अभिव्यक्ति प्राप्त भग हम भविष्य का लगी हमारा उन्नति प्रगति में हमला मार्गदर्शक होगा भाई मैं लग मैं पैला तो बांग्लादेश बारे में कई कुरा मखना चाहूँ हमी बेला ने गौर छाँ हमी गरीब मूलुक का मं सो देश थोड़े जनसंख्या मैं स्वीप रे कुछ में कमी कमजोरी भाई मैं लगे मैं पार्टी को केन्द्रीय सदस्य रही दू दुदी पटक मंत्री होने मौका पाए सब भाला कमजोरी हमी भाषा विश्व में चित्र में हे तीन करोड़ लगभग जनसंख्या भारत देश इस थोड़े जनसंख्या भर में मिले चार लाख पांच लाख आठ लाख दस लाख चालीस लाख का जनसंख्या भैया मूलुक आज कहाँ पुग सक हम उदाहरण भी लिने गर्च समय खर्च करना चाहते क्योंकि यहाँ विद्वान साथी को अगड़ी मैं भन्न जरूरी छेन रामी हिजो अर्मेन को हम कुछ कर गार्मेन उद्योग सुरू कहीं गए बंग्लादेश कहीं गए अल्ले या भिडियो हेन पाए बांग्लादेश संसारक दोसों श्रेणी में गार्मेन एक्सपर्ट करने देश नेपाल कन सक अब इसको जवाब सब भाग बड़ी तो वर्ग को हैसियत मैं दिखने मैं इस असजिलो मन पे कारण भी छे मैं मौका पा ठाव कोशिश करें हो कि करें हो जनता ने मूल्यांकन करने बेला हो तो समग्र में पोलिटिकल सेक्टर प्रति हम क्यों सकते अयुसेवा निगम हमें सुरू करने थाईलैंड ने सुरू करने को कहीं संगसंगे हो आज हम कभिगर कर हम कारण रंग्लादेश ट्रेड को बंग्लादेश अब हमें कमर्स को सांस्कृतिक मत हो आईटी को सेक्टर में बांग्लादेश कहाँ पुगस म यहाँ एकजा उद्योगपति अगड़ी देखी रहूँ एनबी ग्रुप को एल बी श्रेष्ठ जी अगड़ी देखी रहूँ मन लग पैंतीस चालीस वर्ष अगड़ी वहाँ में तो माड़ा को लगी प्रयोग करें काम नलाग्ने भर फा लप्सी को बिहान रोरा बांग्लादेश में निर्यात कर अमी विराटनगर जुट मिल कौन अवस्था पुरे लप्सी को बिहार भी वैदेशिक मुद्रा आर्जन को ठूल संभावना रहें तो वातावरण हमें दिए कि मैं आज यह क्या विस को कुछ राजनीतिक दल और नेता चीज मात्र होने रह तब जो बुद्धिजीवी इनर्जेटिक यंग मंत्री करने विषय रह यह अलग मीडिया को कुछ मैं संगे जोड़ना चाहे मीडिया हिजो को जमा में सज में भैया सूचना जनता में सूचित करने मध्यम को रूप में लिंक थी तर अति मात्र हो मीडिया कंटेन में जो 
जानु पर्छ अहिलेको मिडियाले भिजन दिन्छ र दिनु पर्छ अहिलेको मिडिया हिजो एसएलसी पास नगरीकन पत्रकारितामा लाग्ने जमाना होइन वागले जी यहाँ मायापट्टि हुनुहुन्छ समाज यता हुन्छ वहाँ यता हुनुहुन्छ वहाँहरूले नेपालको चाहिँ इन्ट्रेस्टको प्रतिनिधित्व गरेर धेरैवटा फोरमहरूमा नेपाललाई कसरी समृद्ध बनाउने भएर धेरै ठाउँमा वहाँहरूले आफ्ना कुराहरू आइसक्नु भएको छ आजको मिडियाले फलाना ठाउँमा यस्तो घटना घट्यो है मात्रै भन्दैन भन्नु पनि हुँदैन त्यति मात्रै पुग्दैन अहिलेको मिडियाले के गर्नु यो घटना घट्न नदिनलाई के गर्नु पऱ्यो के कारणले हाम्रो चाहिँ यो ल्याबसेजहरू भएर लिकेजहरू भइरहेको छ भोलि समृद्ध नेपाल के गर्नुपर्ने हो त्यो कुरा अहिलेको मिडियाले भन्न थालेको छ सायद त्यसैले होला म छत्तिस सालदेखिको जन आन्दोलनको एउटा सहभागी र कार्यकर्ताको नाताले म भन्न चाहन्छु छयालिस सालको जन आन्दोलन पञ्चायत समाप्त गर्ने जन आन्दोलनमा राजनीतिक क्षेत्रबाट ठुला ठुला सभा जुलुसहरू गर्न गाह्रो परेको बेलामा मिडियाकर्मीहरूको नेतृत्वमा हजारौँ जुलुस काठमाडौँका सडक र देशभरिको सडकमा निक्लिएको छ त्यस कारणले आज मिडियाको भूमिका सर्वत्र छ नेपालमा त भन्नुहुन्छ भने अहिले मिडिया पावरफुल नहुने हो भने मिडियाले सूचना मात्रै सम्प्रेषण नगरीकन एउटा भिजन दिने राष्ट्रलाई एउटा ट्र्याक चाहिँ क्लियर नगराउने हो भने अथवा मार्गदर्शन नगर्ने हो भने वा जानी नजानी राजनीतिक क्षेत्रमा एउटा दलीय आधारमा होइन व्यक्तिगत आधारमा पनि दलको मात्रै कुरा होइन राष्ट्रको लागि नेशनल इन्ट्रेस्टका लागि सबै ठाउँमा सबै देशहरूमा सबै राजनीतिक दलहरू एक हुन्छन् तर नेपालमा मैले धेरै ठाउँमा हेरेँ कमिटीमा बसेर काम गर्ने मौका पाएँ आफू पावरमा पुगिन्छ भने नेशनल इन्ट्रेस्टलाई नै यथाकथा बिर्सिने चलन यो ठाउँमा हाम्रो छ यो दुर्ग सत्य हो कटु सत्य हो सुधार्नु पर्ने विषय हो ढाट्नु पर्ने कुनै जरुरी छैन त्यस कारणले गर्दाखेरि अहिले बङ्गलादेश दिन प्रतिदिन अगाडि बढिरहेको छ म धन्यवाद दिन चाहन्छु महामिम राजदूत जिउ लगायत बङ्गलादेश एमएससीबाट जो यहाँ प्रतिनिधित्व गरेर भएको छ तपाईँहरू प्रगतिको बाटोमा हुनुहुन्छ कृषिको क्षेत्रमा धेरै वर्ष अगाडि चामल निर्यात गर्थ्यो उताबाट मल ल्याउँथ्यो मल मलाई थाहा छ एएनबी ग्रुप मल त्यहाँबाट चाहिँ आयात गर्ने पनि एउटा त्यो बेलाको सक्षम पार्टी हो र अहिले हामी निर्यात गर्ने कुरा कोही हाम्रो यो अवस्थामा हामी बुझिरहेका छौँ अब यहाँ हिजो बङ्गलादेशमा नेपालको तो गरेर बस्नुहुने मायामा राजनीतिहरू यहाँ हुनुहुन्छ अगाडि पनि हुनुहुन्छ उहाँले धेरै मिहिनेत गर्नु भएको थियो नेपालको उद्योग नेपालको व्यापार नेपालको सांस्कृतिक आदान प्रदान र नेपाललाई कसरी उन्नत मुलुक बनाउने हो भन्ने बारेमा अहिले दूधहरू महामंग राजदूतज्यूहरू पनि यहाँ टिक नभो पजनीमा कतिखेर परेला भन्ने चिन्तामा बस्नुपर्ने हुन्छ र उहाँ त्यो पोलिसी बनाएर कसरी त्यो सरकारलाई कन्भिन्स गर्ने आफ्नो देशका बारेमा त्यो कुरा अहिले गाउनु हुन थालेको छ कुरा सिरियस छ तर राम्रा काम हामीले नै गर्ने तपाईँ सबै हामी मिलेर गर्ने हो संसार भरिका नराम्रा काम पनि मान्छेले गर्छ संसारलाई उथल पुथल पनि मान्छेले गर्नुहुन्छ आज विकासको चरम चुलीमा पुग्ने काम मान्छेले गर्या हो यथास्थितिमा बस्ने काम पनि मान्छेबाट भएको छ त्यस कारणले अब केही गर्ने बेला आएको छ र हामी सबै यो र त्यो नबनिकन लाग्नुपर्ने बेला छ अहिले बङ्गलादेशको अब यो आइटीको क्षेत्रको म अलिकता म सञ्चार मन्त्रालय पनि मैले सम्हालेको नाताले आइटीको क्षेत्रमा विकास नगरीकन अहिले संसारको विकास सम्भवै छैन साउथ कोरियाको अवस्था हेर्छ आइटीको क्षेत्रमा सबभन्दा सर्वश्रेष्ठ देश अहिले चाहिँ विकासको देश साउथ कोरिया भएको छ कति वर्षभित्र साउथ कोरिया यो अवस्था भयो लक्जेम भयो एउटा सानो देश सानो टाको भने हुन्छ यत्रो पुच्छे देश हामी कहाँ पुच्छे देश हौँ त्यो देश आइटीमा विकास गरेर कहाँ पुगिसकेको छ तैँले के गरिस् पनि भन्ने कुरा आउँछ म पनि त हेर्नु थोरै समय भए नि मन्त्रालय बसे नि टू थाउजेन्ड ट्वेन्टी सेभेनलाई डिजिटल वर्ष घोषणा गर्नुपर्छ भनेर सारा तयारी गरेर हामीले एउटा कार्यक्रम गऱ्यौँ सातवटा प्रदेशको चौध जिल्लामा प्राइमेरी स्कुलहरूमा त पढाइ राम्रो हुने भयो सरकारी स्कुलहरूमा तुलनात्मक दृष्टिकोणले पढाइ कमजोर हुने भयो आइडीको विकासका लागि प्राविदेखि सरकारी स्कुल प्राविदेखि मामीसम्म 
कंप्यूटर शिक्षा अनिवार्य कराने तेस में संचार मंत्रालय लगानी करने शिक्षा मंत्रालय ने शिक्षक पढ़न पाठन में ट्रेन कराने प्राविधिक मदद करने हमें सहमति गये हमें पाने एक अरब पैसा पैसा विनियोग गये टेन्डर गये सामान खरीद गये अभी वितरण भैर ये चौदहरा जिला का सब सामुदायिक विद्यालय विद्यालय में कंप्यूटर ट्रेनिंग क्लास सुरू भैस इक्विपमेंट हमें खरीद कर सकते थे तो अलग कथ था अब यहाँ तो राम काम हिजो कसम काम गए मैं अनुसरण करने काम मेरे भाई मैं ये साझा कुछ भनी रहा कस में बढ़ी होगा कसई में घटी होगा कोई कर खोजे हो कोई कम करने कोई बड़ी करने हो रामी में अब तो यो स्थिति आईस कि देश विस का लगी भन्नी भरी बनने जंगबहादुर कसरी बनने अधिकार कसरी आपू में केन्द्रित करने अब होता होने नलिहला मैं सन्दर्भ अनुसार बने हूँ कि सारा ठूलठूला देश का उद्योग धन वा बड़ी बजे लगानी कर बनाने तो का योजना व्यक्ति को अंतर्गत थोड़े व्यक्ति दिन सकने का नपुगे सुरक्षा राष्ट्र को संकटकालीन अवस्था में प्रयोग करने अधिकार सुरक्षा परिषद को अधिकार व्यक्ति में निहित कराने महत्वाकांक्षा बन था इसलिए मूलुक समृद्धि बना हम सब मदि असल काम मैं सुन पड़ सुरू भर हम अगड़ी बढ़ना सक्य सब सुधार को बारे में हिड़ौं हमी बांग्लादेश को कुरा मत हो हमारा भैया प्राकृतिक स्रोत और साधन लिचालन कर सक्यों हम भेला भाव कृषि प्रधान देश सत्तरी हजार मेगावाट भाग बड़ी विद्युत उत्पादन करने क्षमता भारत देश पर्यटन व्यवसाय के हिसाब से पूरे नगर अलिकता हड़ताल आंदोलन फंदोलन बंद होने पे होटल में अक्युपेन्सी रेट हंड्रेड पर्सेंटसम हो प्राय जो मतपूर्ण ठाव रही कता कता पी पर्यं पर्यं नेतृत्वपंक्ति दिशा स्पष्ट कर सकेन चाहे तो कांग्रेस को कार्यकाल में हो चाहे कम्युनिस्ट का कार्यकाल में हो अब हिजो राजा को पूरे नगर अब तो धेरे राजा फिर बन खोज्ते सिंहदरबार को अधिकार गाँव में गाँव में तो अधिकार है फिर बालों का बोल था यह स्थिति ने मूलुक अगड़ी बढ़ाते हैं मैं ये कें आप खाने भले अगले बने यहाँ पढ़े लेखे बुद्धिजीवी मूलुक परिवर्तन कर एटा चाह सपना बोक यंग इनर्जेटिक पार्टिशिपेटर यहाँ धेरे भागना मैं ये कुछ खोजे हूँ रही भूँ मदम काठमंडू बड़ अत्यंत नजिक तर चेलीबेटी बेच बिखन में नाम चले सिंधु पालचो जाड़ सिंह में नाम चले सिंधु पालचो गुंडागर्दी में पंचायत काल में तो नेत बंदुक भे तस्त में जन्मे मं तीन बड़े मैं राजनीति पूरा कर मेरे बाबू बाज कोई काम किस है गोरखा परिषद पंच कांग्रेस को जमा जब क्षेत्र में बड़ा राजनीति करे मं मौका जनता ने साथ ही पटक पटक चुनाव जीत मौका भी पाए कई समय हारे भू तो राम तर तर मैं के लगे परिवर्तन को लगी कसर लगे एवट मंत्री नेतृत्व करने हो हर एक समाज में तस्त नेतृत्व दिने श्रेणी श्रेणी में भि हम सिंगापुर सिंगापुर भाई हेर जाऊटा नेता ने अलिकता बल कर कहाँ पुगे संसार में धेरे यहां देश कारण आज यो कार्यक्रम आयोजना करें एक में अभी जो होना लगी रखे लगानी सम्मेलन का बारे में तेला इस निश्चित रूप में मदद पुर्व रो बांग्लादेश दिन सकने चीज भी धेरे लिखने चीज भी धेरे देश का वास्तव में सहकार करने वातावरण बना रोक कहीं करूँ एक खाल का युवा प्रतिभा वातावरण दिशा भाई ये भव्यता का साथ सफल बाकी कार्य राम सफल हो रो का दिन सकने वातावरण बनोस् हमी प्रत्येक 
व्यक्तिगत इच्छा आकांक्षा और महत्वाकांक्षा भाग मूलुक जनता को महत्वाकांक्षा और आकांक्षा अलिकता बड़ी फिफ्टी पर्सेंट मैं भैन मैं देखे मैं भी चालीस वर्ष भाग बड़ी भैस क्षेत्र में लगे मैं अभी एट भन्न भी नहोर जस लगे मैं भन्न मन लगे फिर सिंधुपाल चौक तस्त अड़पड़ जिला तब सुना बत्तीस वर्ष एसएलसी को फ्री कोचिंग क्लास पढ़ाए हमें निःशुल्क सब विषय सिंधुपाल चौक भरी का विद्यार्थी सिंधुपाल चौक में क्लास काट उन्हें क्लास लिखे तेस पच्चीस प्राउड क्लास बाल क्लास धेरे पढ़ाए हमें खुशी को कुछ सिंधुपाल चौक जिला नेपाल को पेलो साक्षात जिला घोषणा कर सब बड़ी बड़ी खुशी होने मोला सब खुशी होस कारण साथी आदरणी हमी अब मूलुक का कसले कई भन्ना कसले कई करना खोजना चुना बस्ने अवस्था छेन ठीक रेटिंग छुट्टी बेला रहा मीडिया को अत्यंत ठूल भूमिका हो मैं अगर भाई में मीडिया सशक्त नए अब हमी पाला पाला कर सब जेल में बैसा रीडिया एटा भिजन दिने मात्र हो मीडिया एटा गाइडलाइन दिने मात्र हो कंटेन में जाने विषय मात्र हो मीडिया एट उद्योग मीडिया कति प्रकार कांतिपुर को महाप्रतिनिधि कांतिपुर एटा व्यवस्थापक हिसाब से यो एटा स्थापित रंगठन बने तेल इसमें हजारों मत हो लाखों आस्थित छो क्षेत्र में तेल अब इसको भूमिका अत्यंत महत्वपूर्ण छह कुछ निवेदन करते फिर एक चोटी आयोजक साथी हार्दिक धन्यवाद दीदी आपको बनाए अंत करना चाहूँ धन्यवाद नमस्कार जय ने यु सत्र यहीं अंत भाई घोषणा करना चाहूँ धन्यवाद Thank you, Mr. Mohan Bahadur Basit, for chairing this session and for your remarks as well. With this, we come to an end of the first session, the Strong Media Cooperation for Enhancing Bilateral Ties. I thank our keynote speaker and wonderful panelists. Thank you for being so patient and kind to us.